you know what time it is. It's time for On The Run. See you on the other side of the plane. Well, welcome everybody once again to On The Run and well, two weeks in a row, so done pretty well. So I'm shooting this on Thursday, the 7th of December. You'll be watching it on the morning of Friday, the 8th of December. And of course, it seems as though, and in fact is, that I am still at Arcata Manila. Yes, you can see the pink in the background for the uh, the pink rooms at Arcata Manila. And so... Uh, Enjoy a little bit of Akata Manila water and let's get into On The Run for this week. So we had last Friday our um, last mad event in Manila, our last Manila After Dark. That was at COD, City of Dreams Manila, at the Nobu patio at Nobu, which was great. Uh, really, really nice event. Uh, just a really chill atmosphere. Uh, we had a little over 100 people there, suppliers, operators, some people from PADCOR, um, other industry participants, and it was just a really, really nice event. So thank you so much to Melco, and thank you so much to City of Dreams Manila, to uh, Lawrence Ho, to Jeff Andres, and to all the team at City of Dreams Manila. Uh, you did a fantastic job, and we're very, very happy to have the event there. I will now go back to Macau this weekend, this up upcoming weekend, be back in Macau from Monday, and uh, we will have uh, IAG's very last event of the year, which will be MAD in Macau, uh, Macau After Dark, on December 15, our Christmas party, our MAD Santa, which is always traditionally held at Grand Lapa at Vashko Bar. It's going to be fantastic and I hope to see you there. So let's get into the top 10 from this last week. Just go on the top 10 stories, have a little bit of commentary on those stories. Uh, let's get into it now. So starting at number 10 here, Delta Corp interim relief on their 766 million US dollar tax bill, which I note is approximately double their entire net worth, their market cap. So. Uh, ben and I have written uh, quite a bit about this, about the situation in India, uh, that the Indi various governments in India are taxing uh, gaming entities GST not on uh, GGR, but on gross bet value, which is obviously ridiculous. It's like, um, I don't know, if you own a business and you get taxed income tax on your total revenue without taking off the expenses. Well, how on earth could you possibly pay that? The tax would be more than you earned. So that's just not feasible. So what's happened here is they've gone, obviously they've gone to the courts and said, come on, what's going on? And there's been uh, some interim relief granted to Delta Corp on this $766 million US dollar tax bill. Their latest market cap last time we checked was $420 million US dollars. Um, if you want to read uh, a, a good editorial and opinion story about this, go to the editorial of the November issue of IAG, and Ben and I have written a, an interesting piece uh, in there about that. The Sikkim High Court has also stayed another one of these bills. So a few of the high courts in various states of India are staying this, and it will be interesting to see the ultimate outcome. But as we said in that editorial, the fact that this is even happening is terrifying because it means one of two things must be true. Either the governments are totally clueless as to how business works, or they're trying to tax the gaming industry out of existence. So one of those two things must be true. Both are kind of bad. So let's see how all this plays out. All right, on to number nine. Um, land work finally begins at MGM Osaka, yes. Uh, this week, uh, we had the Osaka governor, uh, Hirofumi uh, Yoshimura, come out and say that concrete is now being poured into the ground at Yumishima Island, the man-made island that... Uh, the MGM Osaka will be at their 21 hectare site there and they expect this work to solidify uh, the land and stop liquefaction 
uh, or liquefaction, if you say it that way. There's two ways to say it. Liquefaction seems to be the more popular. Uh, they'll be pouring 173 million US dollars worth of concrete into the ground uh, to try to solidify that up over the next three years. Apparently, this works planned to be completed in April 2027. And the plan is for the casino to open in 2030. So this work will continue on through the 2025 Expo that'll be there in Osaka on Yamashima Island as well. So, well, there are, have they broken ground? I suppose you could say they've broken ground. They're pouring concrete into the ground. Does that count as br breaking ground? I guess it does. It, well, it's some actual physical action taking place on the site. So that's great. So congratulations to MGM. And as I've said before, They've played a great long, long, long game, and who knows, in the end, they might end up having a really great property there. Um, well, they will have a really great property there, but a really profitable property property there if they're the effectively the only ones. They might be the only ones completely. I don't know what's going on there with some, some noise coming from my computer. Um, uh, there might be some um, uh, competition in Nagasaki, but if there is, it'll be pretty weak competition judging by what's going on at the moment. So congratulations to them. Let's move on. Number eight, uh, Imperial Pacific. Uh, what a mess that's become. So Imperial Pacific now has been given uh, 30 days to pay the 62 million US dollars in fees that they owe the CCC. Uh, that's the, the regulator in the Northern Marianas Islands. So we're talking here about the CNMI, the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands, uh, or most of you would know it as Saipan. It's actually three major islands there. Uh, what is it? Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. Uh, Saipan being the biggest one. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, the Imperial Pacific have half built this big integrated resort there. It's all sort of fallen apart and they owe a lot of fees and all the money's dried up and what we had a couple of stories this week um, about that. There's a, a CNMI lawmaker, Rep Representative Marissa Flores, who was very, very vocal uh, on Monday, was it? Or maybe we reported it on Monday. Um, in a CCC meeting, um, CCC, I think is Commonwealth Casino Commission or something like that, it's the regulator. Uh, they've only got one IR to regulate, and they called, this, rep, this representative, Marissa Flores, called on um, the CCC to resign en masse because they've just done, in her view, such a bad job of regulating the whole thing and it's been a disaster. And she said that their license should be revoked, not next month, not next week, but now. And in fact, what had happened was there was a legal case, it's been bound up in legal cases, of course. Uh, the US Supreme Court came out and said uh, there needed to be a reasonable time to give, um, to give a reasonable time to give um, the IPI to pay the money that is owed. And then it determined that a reasonable time was 30 days from notice and the notice only went out on Monday. That's right. I think it was just Monday. And maybe it was in reaction to that lady just jumping up and down and screaming at the CCC. So anyway, long story short, they were given notice on 30th of November. So it was Monday. It was Monday they talked about it. Anyway, whatever. And they've got 30 days from 30th of November, which of course is 30th of December. So they've got to the end of the year, let's say. They've got to the end of the year to pay their $62 million. It seems that they don't have the $62 million. So presumably, finally, their license will be revoked. And then the CNMI will have to figure out what to do with that half-built building in Saipan. Number seven, let's move on to Korea now. And at Choi Chol Gyu has been appointed interim CEO of Kengwon Land. Our regular readers and viewers of IAG will know that Kengwon Land is the only casino in Korea that is allowed to accept local players and traditionally it has accounted for about 50% of all the GGR in Korea so all the others I think there's 14 others foreigner only casinos um, account for half and Kangwon Land accounts for half and Kangwon Land's in a 
quite inaccessible location. So it just goes to show how important it is to have locals, doesn't it? Um, so there's been a lot of scandals at this property. Um, there was a, now let me see if I can uh, remember, the fine was 2.4 million. They were fined for 182 money laundering violations. And also the company that runs Kangwon Land, which is a state-owned company, uh, in its recent annual review, it was given a D, so it's pretty low grade, um, for a number of reasons, including sexual harassment, workplace bullying, graft, and wasteful spending. So that doesn't sound too good, does it? So, and they're falling short of 2023 revenue expectations as well. So a real mess there at Kangwon Land, and I, I guess that explains why uh, the previous guy uh, had, had to go early. They got this new guy in as a temporary until they get a new CEO. So let's see what happens there at Kangwon Land. I must get up there, actually. I've, I've actually never been. A few of our staff have been there, but I've never actually been there. I am planning to go to Korea uh, probably in the first quarter next year, mainly to go and have a look at the new Inspire. And um, I plus I'll also check out Paradise, of course. Maybe I should get so along to Kangwon Land while I'm there. I probably should maybe even go down to Busan as well. It's nice. It's meant to be very nice down there. Check out the Seven Luck down there, perhaps. Anyway, we'll see. That's a that's something for next year. Number six, uh, down to Australia. Uh, Star Sydney is to close if it is not found suitable uh, within the next six months. So what's happened here? The New South Wales Independent Casino Commission. Uh, has extended the period of time that Star City has got, or Star Entertainment, I should say, has got to um, return to suitability. They had until January 2024, but they've now extended that to June 2024. Uh, and they've come out and said, we're not going to keep extending this forever if we don't find Star Entertainment a suitable and proper person to hold a casino license by then the doors will close. And the, um, the exact wording, the exact quote was, um, uh, they have not reached a point where the license suspension can be lifted uh, and it can run its casino without supervision of the manager so that the NICC, the New South Wales Independent Casino Commission, is saying, look, they're still not suitable and we're going to give them six more months and if they can't prove they're suitable within those six months, the manager will be retired, the doors will close, that will be that. So that would be quite an amazing thing. They had a net loss of 2.4 billion Australian dollars, which is about 1.6 billion US dollars uh, for the year into 30th of June, 2023. So this just goes to show um, what a mess the Australian industry is. Well, certainly what stars in Crown's also suffering its own issues. Although I think Crown's probably doing a better job in their, in their um, remediation efforts, but still uh, tough times down in Australia. Number five, PH Resorts in Cebu, uh, again, seeking investors. Excuse me. So PH Resorts have uh, come out with this, uh, the Emerald Bay. It's been going on for years. Um, this is in Cebu, the second biggest city in the Philippines. So New Star opened in 2022 in Cebu and uh, PH Resorts would be its competitor. Um, but, uh, sorry, Emerald Bay would be the name of the property uh, owned by PH Resorts would be its competitor. Uh, it's been looking for finance for a very long time. Solaire was going to bail them out, but then in March this year, they pulled out. Uh, and then PH Resorts came out and said that they had signed, when, when was it? It was in October. They came out and said, we've signed an MOU with this um, company called Apple One Properties, a Cebu based company. But now they've lodged another filing this week with the, or last week, with the Philippine Stock Exchange saying, well, this is not an exclusive MOU. Nothing's been definitively signed. And so now we're talking to other parties. And I mean, to be honest with you, I've heard on the grapevine from other people that they're, they're basically asking anyone, is there anybody that will come and rescue them so they don't have the funds? So things are not looking so great for PH resorts. Anyway, let's see if that property ever comes to fruition, I suppose. 
if they don't get any funding, eventually the whole thing's going to fall over and somebody's going to pick up, pick up the idea for a song, maybe. Let's see what happens. On to number four. So um, Han, our good friends up at Han Casino Resort in Clark. They're clearly the number one property um, up there in Clark. Uh, about an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours, depending on when you drive and how fast you drive, uh, north of Manila. Uh, they have broken ground on a banyan tree, the first ever banyan tree uh, resort in the Philippines. So that's exciting for them. This is part of the 450 hectare luxury lifestyle thing that they've announced called Han Reserve. It's going to have three golf courses. It's going to be pretty amazing. It's going to have three golf courses. Uh, it's going to have... Uh, clubhouses, residential, uh, commercial centre. Uh, there's going to be 50 villas in this banyan tree. It's going to have multiple hotel brands, a uh, collection of resorts. So that's pretty amazing. And we've written about that before on IAG. Uh, so good luck to Mr. Han and all of the people up there at Han Casino Resort. They've broken ground on that banyan tree. And let's see how that goes. Now, number three... Um, SJM has appointed Ben Toe as their COO. So Ben was Ben was formerly at Sands. Um, then be immediately before being appointed COO, uh, just in the last few days, he was CFO of SJM Resorts. He's been bumped up to COO. Many of you may ask, what does that mean for Frank McFadden? Frank's an exceedingly popular figure in our industry. Uh, great guy, we like him very much. Uh, Frank is still continuing on at uh, SJM Resorts as a senior advisor. So I think this is all kind of um, just ongoing, normal succession type stuff. Uh, so congratulations to Ben. And that of course made the CFO position open and that was filled by a guy I don't know by the name of Chris Ip. And he's got a background, not in the gaming industry, but in finance with companies like Morgan Stanley, Deutsche Bank, uh, Jardine Matheson, were the companies that there were, were named. Let's move on. Number two. So Las Vegas Sands to increase their stake in their subsidiary Sands China Limited by 250 million US dollars. So... Um, uh, many of you will have uh, been following the major news from last week, which was that Miriam Addison is selling $2 billion worth of LVS stock in order to finance a majority acquisition of the Dallas Mavericks, of course, aligned with Mark Cuban. And actually, Las Vegas Sands is planning to buy $250 million, so one-eighth of that stock that she is selling and i know that um, rob goldstein has come out and said that um it's a good time to acquire uh, for lvs to acquire its own stock the price is relatively low given how they're doing um the price of scl is definitely low so i think lvs has come out and said well it's a great time to acquire some scl stock too because the price is quite low compared to how well they're all doing and this is a common theme in Macau. Share price is quite low at the moment, given their profitability. You know, we're back to 100% of, of pre-COVID mass. Uh, sure, we've lost most of the VIP, but that was never very profitable anyway. So yeah, um, buying, buying your own stock seems to be flavor of the month at the moment. And number one, to reiterate what I just said, the November GGR number for Macau came out and it was 16.04 billion. So 2 billion US basically, divide by eight. Uh, congratulations to Macau. And Macau has been uh, trundling along with uh, 2 billion US each month, a little bit more in October. October was the record. It was 19 point, no, it was 20, 20.4. So there was 164 billion uh, MOP, so 20.4 billion US, yes. So uh, things are going very well for Macau. Not the 44 billion that it was in 2013, but remember, no VIP. So the GGR that's so-called missing is very low margin GGR. 
The interesting thing here, of course, is will we trigger, and we probably will, trigger the 180 billion MOP revenue number that means 20% more non-gaming spend for each of the concessionaires out of the contracts they signed in December 2022, the 10-year concessions. So if they do trigger that 180 billion revenue for the or for all of Macau, I think we're sitting at 100 and... Did I say 20 billion last month? And of course, what I meant was year to date, 20 billion. Sorry about that. Last month was, uh, yeah, it was 2.4 billion. No, no, I said 164 billion MOP. So sorry about that. Um, yes, I meant 164 billion MOP for the year to date for the 11 months, which is about 20 billion uh, for the 11 months so far. And what I did mean to say was in October, the GGR was 2.8. 2.4 billion compared US compared to the 2.04 billion uh, in November. Sorry about that confusion. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're up to 164 billion. So 164 and a half, I think. So if we have another 15 and a half billion next month, which probably you would think we would, that's roughly where we've been coming in at. Like October was like, I think, 19 billion. This month was obviously 16, or last month, November, was 16 billion, 16.04. So you'd think December would be a few holiday days in December. I think pretty safe to say, unless they try and do something to reduce the GGR, um, I think that they will hit that 180 billion and therefore have to pay an extra 20% uh, commitment for non-gaming. Um, under the contracts, it's 20% more for the first five years. So that's 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. And then it goes down, 26, 28, the sixth year, it goes down to 16%. Then each year it goes down by 4%. So 12%, 8%, 4%, and 0% in the last year of the 10-year concessions. So actually, if you want to know a bit more about this, we did a really great article that we published we published it on the 21st of December, 2022. I distinctly remember the day. They signed the contracts on the 16th of December, 2022. And it's called Everything You Need to Know About uh, Macau's New Concessionaire Concessions or something like that. We'll put the link to that in the description below if you're watching on YouTube or in the article if you're watching this on the ASGAM website. That's a great article that summarizes all of the obligations of the concessionaires under the new concession contracts. So that's the top 10 for this uh, week. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I now head back to Macau on the weekend. I'll be there uh, for all the way up to almost Christmas. Quick trip to Hong Kong for a day or two and then down to Melbourne for Christmas itself. And I'll be down there for uh, down in Australia for much the first much of January, probably the first three weeks of January, taking a well earned break and actually doing a little bit of work down there and planning for 2024. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching on the run, and we'll see you next time next Thursday, which will actually be next Friday for you, which will be the day of Mad. Is that right? Yes, it will be. It will be the the day of Mad and IAG's last day for the year before we close the office. So uh, we're very much looking forward to that. Our whole team are very much looking forward to that. See you. Have a great weekend. See you next week. Bye for now. Run.